this video I'm going to continue from the previous video and I'm going to talk about the third type of flow meter, the third type of obstruction type flow meters and that's called the venturi meter. And the operating principle for this device is exactly the same as it was for the orifice or nozzle meters. Uh, but the point is that the geometry of uh, venturi meters is designed so that the head losses are reduced as much as possible. And the way we do it is that, like we talked about uh, the conical diffusers when we were talking about minor losses, that um, we do this by basically streamlining the contraction here. Okay, So this contraction takes place in a more streamlined manner. And then this eliminates the separation that would have taken place ahead of the throat. So this is the throat area over here. And then there is a very gradual expansion now. Okay, So the contraction has taken place. And now after the throat, uh, a very gradual expansion takes place uh, of this throat downstream. And because of this, then separation is also eliminated. Flow separation is also eliminated um, in this portion of the device as well. And the fluid is basically decelerating in this portion. So most of the head loss that takes place in a really well-designed venturi meter would be because of the friction losses uh, along the pipe wall here, uh, rather than the losses that would have been associated with flow separation that would have been taking place here. So losses only take place because of uh, the friction losses, not because, not because of they do not take place because of the separated flows and inefficient inefficient mixing that would have been taking place. No, that doesn't happen for a venturi flow meter. So again, as we did previously, flow rate for the venturi meter is going to be given in terms of the ideal flow rate. And this ideal flow rate is going to be multiplied by the coefficient over here. And this is called the venturi discharge coefficient, C subscript V. And that is going to give us the flow rate. This is Q over here. And then I could write this in terms of CV, C subscript V multiplied uh, by basically area of the throat, which is AT. And this AT is going to be equal to pi D square divided by 4, just as we did previously. And this entire term is going to be multiplied by, again, uh, the values under the root. And that was 2 into P1 minus P2 divided by rho, which is density, multiplied by 1 minus beta to the power of 4. Okay. This is rho over here. This is density, 1 minus beta to the power of 4. And beta over here is the diameter ratio, throat to pipe diameter ratio, and that is equal to small d divided by the capital D. And now, basically, the value of CV over here is dependent on not just um, the beta value, but also the Reynolds number, and um, the shape of this, conver this converging section, and then this diverging section of uh, uh, the meter. Um, usually, I'm just going to show you this over here, the value of CV, this is, these are three different um, equations through which we can work it out depending on what the Reynolds number is and depending within which range it falls. This is how we determine the value of CV. So this relationship is not given in the book, uh, in Munson's book, but if let's say somebody was supposed to ask you what the value for CV would be for a venturi meter, these are the relationships you should be working with. Uh, you would obviously know what the Reynolds number is and depending on that Reynolds number then you can work out the value for CV and obviously you have to be careful that uh, what is the range of and with, with, within which your Reynolds, Reynolds number falls. Um, just to simplify things a bit more though, usually the value for CV is somewhere between 
0.97 to 0 0.99. So it's even more efficient in terms of the energy dissipation as compared to um, the orifice meter and the nozzle meters. So these are the three obstruction type uh, flow meters. There's a variety of other devices too that can be used to measure flow rates in the pipes. Um, but then they, these other devices use principles other than the high speed low pressure concept that we just saw in the orifice nozzle and mentorate meters. And uh, one of the most common uh, types of flow meters then is called a rotameter. It's also called a variable flow meter. Um, this is an important um, device It's because it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, so it's not expensive at all. Um, it's called a variable area meter. Remember that too. And what happens in this device is that this over here is a float. So when the flow rate starts uh, flowing through this rotameter, the, this float is going to start rising up. And this height then corresponds to uh, basically an equilibrium condition, which is then dependent on the net force on the float. So buoyancy, float weight, fluid drag, all of this. And you have a calibration scale that is marked over here that provides the relationship between the, fl uh, between the float position and the flow rate. So when this float is at this, because this is tapered, right? This uh, device is tapered. So when it goes all the way up, this float is over here at the large end of the tube, then that indicates that the flow rate is maximum. Okay. And like I said, this is this is marked, so these are the markings on it, and uh, the markings correspond with the position of the float, and that gives you the flow rate reading. Um, it's This float is always freely suspended in the fluid, whatever that is, and obviously when the float is at a lower position, then that indicates that you have minimum flow rate uh, within your pipe. So these are just the typical uh, kinds of flow meters that are available to the industry or that we use usually. Other than this, we also have uh, volume flow meters. So until now, we were looking at um, basically devices that were measuring volume flow rate. But instead of that, sometimes it is useful that we don't measure the volume flow rate and instead we just measure the volume instead. So instead of, uh, let's say, meter cube per second, we are just measuring the meter cube content, the volume content, using, uh, using volume flow meters. And one of the types of volume flow meters is called a nutating disk meter. Uh, it's also called a positive display displacement meter. Nutating basically means uh, that bobbling, bobbling kind of um, basically movement. So this is what a nutating disk meter looks like. And usually this kind of uh, disk meter is used to measure the amount of water that be, that is being used in, let's say, uh, the domestic water systems, the residential, uh, let's say, water systems for residences you sometimes use, mostly use, these nutating disk meters to find out what is the volume that is being used by that particular house, the volume of water that, that is being used. And then depending on that, um, where, whichever residence area you live in, they can give you the bill for it. They can bill you for it. So this meter is useful because it essentially contains only one moving part. And it's a little bit harder to understand its operation by just, by just looking at a figure over here. So I'm just going to show you this uh, uh, animation over here uh, and how it works basically. So this, um, in the middle we have, let's say, this disc and, hold on, let me just look at it again. Okay, so we have this disc and it's actually not rotating. Okay, so it's not rotating in a circle or anything. It's just moving on an axis. So it's when I say moving on an axis, it's just 
using this movement up and down on the axis it's not rotating like this okay so it's just moving about hold on the axis and uh, what else so what happens is that this fluid if you can see it this fluid when it enters this chamber and it flows over this disc this entire uh, disc completes one wobble that corresponds to a specific volume of fluid that is passing through the chamber so each wobble over here this is this is the wobbling motion over here so each wobble of the disc here the pin that is attached on the top it completes one uh, circle okay so it completes one entire motion so the volume of fluid that is passed through the meter is then obtained by counting the number of revolutions that is completed that's what we are doing over here so what's happening again here is that water flows into the meter housing over here into the casing and then it enters this measuring chamber into the diaphragm um, and then it completes basically uh, rotation on top of this disc and uh, because of that because of the wobbling motion of this disc in here the pin on the top is moving as well and the one entire pin revolution uh, or one entire pin circle that it completes is equal to a certain amount of volume of the fluid that is passed through the meter and by counting the number of revolutions that have been completed over here obviously so this is the counter over here this is what is counting this the number of revolutions over here and that is how you measure the amount of water the volume of water that is passed through uh, this device okay so another device then that we need to just look at real quickly is a bellows type of flow rate a flow meter and the bellows type of flow meter is uh, basically ones that you usually see uh, when it comes to your natural gas meters that are outside your houses okay so that's called a bellows type flow meter or a diaphragm uh, flow meter and the way that it this works is that first of all at this bellows two here this is this is open first of all and uh, the fluid passes into this uh, number two chamber here you could say you could call it a chamber or a filling and at the same time uh, basically gas is expelled out of the chamber one over here and then when this is completely full then what happens is that the mechanical linkage that is over here on the top slides into a new position and that allows this number three over here so these two are moving and when this is completely full this opens up a way for uh, this uh, number three linkage to open up and the number three bellows to open up these are called bellows so number three opens up and uh, then basically um, when number three is full it allows chamber one over here now to start filling and at the same time number two over here starts um, basically expelling the gas and when now two is empty the linkage again slides to a different position and then number four over here starts filling up simultaneously at the same time as number three is emptying up so number four four is filling up while number three is emptying up right and when number four is empty uh, the mechanical linkages over here slide to a new position and that completes the entire cycle so this cycle continues as long as the gas is being consumed by an appliance okay so that is how we see the meter reading on top here that uh, this cycle keeps continuing as long as the gas is being used um, a known quantity of gas is being measured um, the, and it's also called the diaphragm type of flow meter because this is basically the diaphragm which is expanding and contracting 
Uh, what else? Okay, so yeah, that's basically the bellows type of flow meter. It's, you usually see it outside your residences for natural gas flow meters. And that ends our discussion about these different types of uh, volume flow rate meters and then volume flow meters as well. There's a lot of other devices as well that are used to measure uh, fluid flow. I've only discussed a few over here. If you want, you can go and take a look at what the other devices are. Uh, but this is just a general introduction to different types of uh, volume flow rate meters and volume flow meters as well.